Hello again. Let us continue to work with job order costing. In this section, we will learn basic journal entries first and then see how to deal with manufacturing overhead costs. Here, I have put up the basic picture of cost job costing again so that you can refresh your memory on what is on the debit side of each account and what is on the credit side. Please take a careful look or keep this slide handy if you need it later. I hope that you remember the basics of journal entries. We will, uh, we will use the, the journal entries shortly to show the flow of costs in a job costing system. We will practice journal entries used commonly in job costing, but since you have seen the flow of costs through T accounts, you should be able to track back to the journal entry in most cases. The first common transaction is the purchase of raw materials. What should be the journal entry for that? One way to answer that is to say that purchases are on the debit side of materials account, so purchases of raw materials should be debited. Now what should be credited? This you cannot answer by looking at our T accounts because we never made a cash or a bank account. So another way to come up with a journal entry is to use the rule debit what comes in and credit what goes out. Now it should be easy to make the two-sided journal entry debit what comes in. Here it would be raw material so we can also call it raw material control account. Now try to see what went out of the business when you bought in raw material. If you paid cash or you paid by check you will credit cash or bank. If you did not pay yet you will be crediting accounts payable account. Next typical journal entry is to transfer direct materials into work in process account and to transfer indirect materials into manufacturing overhead account. Again, you know from T accounts that direct material goes out of materials account into the debit side of work in process account. That can give you your general entry start to debit work in process account and credit materials. If you have some indirect material purchased also, you would have to transfer them into manufacturing overhead account. Again, they go out from materials account into the debit side of manufacturing overhead account. So the journal entry would be to debit manufacturing overhead and credit material. Here we have combined these two entries into one composite entry. Please remember that the amount credited must be equal to the amount debited in each journal entry. Next, we need a journal entry to charge direct and indirect labor to work in process account and to manufacturing overhead account just like in material case above. You know that labor goes out of labor or wages payable account, whatever name you want to give it, and it goes into the debit side of work in process account if it is direct labor and it goes into manufacturing overhead account if it is indirect labor. So we have another composite entry to transfer all labor costs into correct places. The next general entry shows actual costs incurred on various manufacturing overheads like rent, depreciation, etc. Since they all go to the debit side of our T account, manufacturing overhead account is debited and various indirect cost accounts are credited. The next journal entry is needed to apply manufacturing overhead costs to work in process using a budgeted overhead rate. Remember in our T accounts for manufacturing overhead, actual overhead costs were posted on the debit side but the applied overhead goes out of the credit side of manufacturing overhead account into the debit side of work in process account. This gives you a general entry again, debit work in process account and credit manufacturing overhead account. Note two things here. First, that actual manufacturing overhead expenses have nothing to do with work in process account. They are not taken to work in process account at all and they are not charged to jobs either. A second thing to note here is that the debit side of manufacturing overhead account, which is actual manufacturing overhead, is not likely to be equal 
to the credit side, which is applied manufacturing overhead. Since the account has to be closed at year end, any difference between the two sides will require an adjusting entry, which we will discuss shortly. But right now, let us stay with entries in our work in process account. I hope you are getting comfortable with journal entries now. Next, we need an entry to transfer completed goods out of work in process account and into finished goods. If you remember the general entry rule of debit what comes in and credit what goes out, you can credit work in process account and debit finished goods. You can also construct this entry if you can picture the flow of inventory in our 3T account series. So now goods are waiting in finished goods account to be sold. When finished goods are sold, we need two journal entries. One is to record the sale and a second one to take cost of goods sold out of finished goods so that cost of goods sold can go into income statement. So here we have an entry for products sold to customers. We can debit accounts receivable, we can debit cash or bank, but we would be crediting sales or sales revenue. The final entry is to take cost of goods sold out of finished goods and put it into income statement whenever the time comes. Let us quickly practice what we have learned so far. The first question is about journal entry for purchase of raw material. Can you do it yourself? It is a simple one. You debit material account and credit cash or bank or accounts payable with the correct amount. The second one is a little hard. The question says what if some of the raw material bought is indirect material. Remember indirect material and indirect labor belong in manufacturing more overhead account. So we will take them out of our material account and put them into manufacturing overhead account. Remember anything that is taken out of material account is credited. So indirect material would be credited. I'm sorry, the direct material used will go to work in process account directly, but indirect material will first go to manufacturing overhead account. And then from there, it will get allocated or applied to work in process account. Lastly, we have a situation where the company spent $47,000 on manufacturing overheads actually, but applied only 40,000. So we will have two journal entries here. One for sending actual manufacturing overhead to the debit side of manufacturing overhead account and the other to send applied overhead to work in process accounts debit side. Okay, now that we have done all the necessary journal entries and closed all other accounts, one account is still open. Let us turn our attention back to manufacturing overhead account one more time. Remember, there are actual manufacturing overhead costs on debit side of this account and applied manufacturing overhead on the credit side. Almost these sides are almost never equal to each other. So depending on which side is bigger, we will call it either under applied overhead or over applied overhead. Under applied means applied too little, meaning credit side of the account when up, where applied overhead is, is smaller than the actual overhead on the debit side. So you need to put some weight on the credit side of the account to make both sides equal. Over applied overhead on the other hand means applying too much, meaning applied overhead on the credit side of manufacturing overhead account is bigger than actual overhead on the debit side of the account. In this situation, we need to add some weight to the debit side of the account to make two sides equal. So in order to figure out how much under or over applied overhead we have, we take the difference between actual and applied overhead. If actual is bigger, you apply too, much, too little and you need to put more on credit side. If actual is smaller, you apply too much. So overhead is over applied and we need to take it to the debit side to close the account.